Okay, I'm going to try and fix the lift again. So what I've done is I've bought a six-way double action um, electric pump with controller. I'm going to try and make an, a wireless one also, a controller for the upper part of the boom. And then on the lift here, I've already gotten the old gas motor loose. The uh, motor works great. I'll keep it for something. I'm basically going to take all this out. Global picture, what are you working on? <laughs> Bigger picture. Uh, so the pump broke. I have a video that I'm doing on the pump itself. On the pump itself? Yeah, I actually did one several months ago before we sold my house. Where okay. I was, uh, there's like elephants upstairs. I know. Where I was. Uh, I think they heard us recording again, so they start making noise trying to fix it back then and it didn't work, so I'm continuing that. So this is on the lift. It's a hydraulic lift. And I need you to changed what? All of the... You I changed, changed all the hoses for the boom when yeah. we bought it because they were really bad and uh, they are all crested and cracked and I was afraid one was going to break. So typically on hydraulic lines, once one, one breaks, they all... Once one, breaks they all start breaking yes so i just replaced all the all the main hoses up up to the boom of course what i'm doing now is completely eliminating all those hoses that i put in <laughs> so it was a complete waste but um it's okay uh, this new pump uh, to be controlled i'm going to get some wireless 12 volt uh, wireless switches so i can control it from the boom wirelessly without any of those hoses because before the hydraulic I have to go from here up to there and then back down, and this eliminates that extra Or somebody has to stand, stand here. Yeah, so I'm going to stay down here and do this. Yes, and then, of course, done. the new pump has hot. this long cord. So when this rotated, the person here would have to be... Yes, I'll show you. Everything. So the engine, yeah, it was right here, and that was a gas engine. And the switches were right here, because I've operated this. So you would have to stand here, and as this rotated, you would have to climb around everything while the boom up there was moving because the switches up top did not work so somebody had to be stand here next to it operating it the whole time and that was definitely not fun. It's hot. It's a hot in Topeka. It's a hot in Topeka. <laughs> okay. So how much further do you have to go? Quite a bit. Well, the problem I'm having trying to figure this out is there are these hoses. I know where these go. I know where these go. These three run this pump or this cylinder, that cylinder, and the cylinder up there. And I'm not quite sure how they all work out. I know there's an emergency bleeder valve over here that lets you down in case you get stuck up in here. And I know it goes down and it all connects together and it's just confusing. So I'm trying to figure out how to make all that work. No, I can figure out it's just by trial and error. So there's a lot of hoses in there. You just need to hook it up, basically. And no manuals anywhere. Right? Yeah. No. No manuals on this, no manuals on the pump. Got everything hooked up. Everything, well almost everything is working. I had to actually take the uh, controller apart to figure out which valves go to what. And the way I did that was by on the back. There's a green wire and those different colored wires. So when I took this apart, I just looked at what colored wire went to which one and then marked it so I wouldn't forget it. Um, I did finally get the company to send me some sort of manual on this. However, it was not so much a manual. It was also for a different product. Uh, same company and same type of motor, but did not have the six-way or any of these extra valves and stuff. So I still am not sure what those do or what they are for. Um, of course I hooked everything up. Uh, up was down and down was up and so instead of taking all my uh, fittings back off and rearranging them or hoses like I just have to switch these two hoses and it would work. Instead I just switched the um, wires back here. So you can see that yellow goes to green and now green goes to yellow. And all I did is just switches which uh, one of these um, solenoids turns on. Um, but it's going all okay. The only other concern I have is this motor gets hot. You know, it's been sitting here now for 
but I don't know, probably five, ten minutes while I've been messing around and it's still pretty warm. So I'm concerned that in routine use, that sucker's gonna get pretty toasty. So everything's down right now. So I may go ahead and fill it up the rest of the way, run the pump and the boom and everything out, and then just see how that works. If not, if it's not being able to suck enough fluid, I still have my hose over here, and I have I have a way to tap in here with a um, bulkhead fitting. So bulkhead fitting is basically you have your um, plastic, and on either side it crimps together and then gives you a fitting, so a three quarter inch fitting. But that pipe leads over here and into the tank so I can still use this tank and if I can find a way to still hook up the pressure relief valve this is where it would go so when I'm laying the boom down it would the fluid would squirt back through here and into the tank and then um, it could gain extra capacity off this old old tank here so the bulkhead fitting is right here so basically I'll screw these two together they will and this for some reason this is reverse threading this is left hand threading which is weird anyways so I'd pinch this in there there's a grommet right here and then that would hook on to my hose so that's how we get fluid back and forth from one to the other anyways to drill my hole in here I've got to take this tank off so I basically need to disassemble everything and then um, take that uh, tank off, drill my hole, and then put it all back together. So I can leave all my hoses and everything all hooked up there. I just need to unbolt from the bottom, siphon out the uh, fluid, and then um, there's four bolts and then a, a pipe strap. I just need to undo all that. Okay, so the lift continues to be a pain in my butt. Um, everything's working. I did hook up the additional reservoir yesterday by running a line from the tank on the other side to this one. And the problem I was having with that is that there's a vented cap here. So as this pump was trying to pull fluid, it was pulling more air than the fluid was coming through from the other tank. So what happened is it would drain it down and instead of this just flowing through, it, flew, it came through really slow. And that was not providing um, the amount of fluid it needed. So to verify that, I basically took it off, just plugged up the hole on top and it worked fine. Because this cap is of course vented as it should be. So what I need to do now is go get a cap that is not vented. Um, just basically a plug and plug that up. Hope I won't have any problem finding one. Beyond that, everything else works. The up, down, left, right, and out, all that stuff works. Actually, the down is what the problem is. When it comes down, there's this awful chattering noise. And everything I read says it's, it's aeration um, or cavitation. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not even sure quite how to bleed it out and how all that's going to work. So these are the two valves that run the up and down. Um, I'm just not... I don't know why there would be, be air in it and still air in there. I'm not quite sure. I did find out that this is the master leveling cylinder and they're in the slave leveling cylinders up there. So I found out what this does is that as this raises and lowers, it will, um, of course it will cause this cylinder to pull in and out. And as it pulls in and out, it will cause suction on the two lines that run up to the main um, so as that raises and lowers, it causes suction or pressure on this cylinder and that will cause this to level or to adjust at the same rate as the one back there is. So really all I have to do is get these two lines uh, filled up with fluid and then um, basically cap off these two lines. This one that goes to the old motor and this one goes to the old motor because what this did is you were able to rotate the bucket 90 degrees when you were driving. So I believe that was just there for uh, traveling purposes, nothing more. So I can disconnect these and cap them and then um, the only issue I'm going to have there is just making sure there's no air in the line. So I'm back to my air issue. 
I should be able to work that out to where it's nice and nice and tight. I'll figure out a way to do that. But that solves that problem, so I'm not worried about that issue anymore. All right, so things seem to be working now. I bought a restriction valve, which is right here. I don't like how many fittings I had to use. There's three fittings in there. The center one is a restriction valve, and the pinhole is, I mean, it's just like a pin needle. It's so tiny, I really thought I'd have to drill it out more. But um, what this does, this is from the old setup. So the main pressure comes in through here, and then when the solenoid is hit, it goes through this uh, line to this line, which goes up to the piston. But actually what is happening is it's in reverse. So um, the reason why I have this T in here is because when the up motion is going, fluid has to flow back the other direction, back through this one, and there's no constriction if it goes through this path. So when I hit the down button, which is gonna push fluid the other way through here, it's gonna automatically hit this solenoid because I rigged this up to the button. So now the fluid's gonna go this way instead of this way. So when it goes through here, it's gotta go through that restriction and then down to the T and then back out again. So essentially what it's doing is, it's just a, a one, a, a, well, it's a switch. It just redirects the flow through this little pinhole. So that got rid of my amazingly loud noise but oddly enough, it seems to drop the boom faster. So my seal is now really leaking, so I'm going to have to get that fixed. But real quick, I'll show you how this is working now. So my concern is the down part is so fast. But at least it goes down without banging everywhere. So here's that uh, solenoid, and I'll show you if I disconnect it. Okay, it's got disconnected, now it will do the... So it's weird, it goes down slower, but it um, makes that awful noise. If I hook the bypass up... Then it works. It just goes down faster than I would like it to. So, anyways, now I'm going to go, I got everything hooked up, run it over to my uh, repair guy and get that seal changed out. But I think it's pretty much a success. I'll probably dress this up a little bit more, put these more in order, but beyond that, it looks good. So I called around to some people to ask them about it, and they said, oh, it'll never work, you can't do that, you can't do that. Well, I did it. Works just fine.